Press the bell icon so you never miss an update from Rao's IIS. Hello and welcome to Daily Presents Practice, where we take up the questions from the Hindu and the Indian Express and curate them according to the needs of prelims examination. The themes for our discussion are listed on your screen. Hello students, there is an announcement for you regarding the optional classes, which we at Rao's IES are starting at Bengaluru and New Delhi Centre. The optional paper of public administration will be taken up by Anubhav Sharma sir at the Bangalore campus on 26 September from 3.30 pm. For the history optional subject, orientation class at the Bangalore campus will be taken up by Parampreet Singh sir on 27th of September from 3.30 pm. And the orientation for geography as an optional subject will be taken up by Indrajit Bariyar sir on 27th September from 6 pm. So these three subjects will be taken up at Bangalore Centre. Shobik Sensor will take up the optional classes for Psychology Optional at New Delhi on 28th of September from 3.30 pm. And this will be followed up by the orientation class of Sociology by Dr. Surendra Singh Sir on 28th of September from 6 pm onwards. On 29th September, the orientation class will be taken up for PSIR Optional by Rahul Puri Sir from 3.30 pm. Whereas on the same day, that is on 29th September from 6 pm onwards, orientation classes for the history optional will be taken up by Kritika Ma'am and Mathimaran Raju sir. Next, on 30th of September, the orientation class for public administration will be taken up by Dr. V.K. Kaushik sir from 3.30 pm, which will be followed up by the orientation class for geography optional at New Delhi campus from 6 pm on 30th of September by Vini Thaplu sir. Now these orientation classes will be conducted both online and also in the offline mode. And these classes you can interact with your teachers about the optional subjects, the nature of questions asked and also the syllabus provided by UPSC. The first article that has appeared today is in Indian Express and talks about the PM Shri schools that is Pradhan Mantri schools for rising India scheme. Now UPSC has consistently asked questions related to various government schemes and such a question was also seen in the year 2017, thereby the major schemes introduced by the government are of considerable importance for the prelims point of view. The practice question says, consider the following statements regarding PM Shri scheme. The first statement is, it is a centrally sponsored scheme with an aim to upgrade and development of school across the country. Now this statement is correct as PM Shri schemes aims to upgrade and develop more than 14,500 schools across the country. Moving on to the second statement, it says only the central government schools like Kendri Vidyalaya, Jawar Navodde Vidyalaya will be considered for the upgradation. Now question has given only. This statement is wrong because PM Shri will not only cover the Kendri Vidyalaya or the Jawar Navodde Vidyalaya that are central government school but will also consider schools that are run by state governments or even by the local municipal corporations. So the correct quote to the question will be A that is only one is correct. Moving on to the next article, it, it talks about the decline in forest reserves due to the depreciation in the value of money vis-a-vis -vis dollar in the current times. Now UPSC in the previous year under the economic section has asked questions related to the foreign reserve and the forex reserve and thus this area becomes important from the point of view of prelims. The practice question says that which among the following constitute foreign currency assets under the forex reserve. They have asked us about the foreign currency assets. Option 1 here is investment in foreign GSEC. Now this statement is correct. The second statement is deposits with the other central banks. This is wrong. SDR. This is also wrong. Reverse transposition, this is also wrong. Now these three are definitely part of our forex reserve, but they are not part of our foreign currency assets. We need to understand the difference between foreign currency assets that includes foreign currency, investment in foreign GSEX, deposit with other central banks, deposit with overseas branches of commercial banks, etc. But excludes monetary gold, SDR holdings reserve position in the IMF because they are the part of broader forex reserve. Another point of thing to understand in this question is that foreign exchange reserve does not necessarily lie in the same country. Meaning thereby investment in foreign G6, 
deposit with other central banks also forms the part of the foreign exchange reserve so the correct code for the question will be option a that is only statement 1 is correct moving on to the next article it talks about the bank liquidity situation in india which has for the first time gone into the deficit mode since 2019 now upsc again under the economic section has consistently asked questions related to banking and thus this area becomes important for us the practice question says with reference to the repo rate consider the following statements the first statement is the repo rate is always used by the rbi to inject short term liquidity into the economy now the statement is incorrect because the repo rate is not only used for short term but can also be utilized for long term liquidity injection in the economy as we can see the example of long term repo operation thereby the duration of repo ranges from 1 day to 3 years moving on to the second statement it says that there is no limit on borrowings through the repo rate now this statement is also wrong as there is a limit on the borrowings under the repo rate which stands at 1% of net demand and time liabilities question further says that which among the statements given above is or are incorrect now we have to be very peculiar about the keywords that have been used in the statements by the upsc so as per the demand of the question both the statements are incorrect and thus the correct code for the answer will be option c that is both 1 and 2 are incorrect moving on to the next article it talks about carbon dating as the issue is in news related to the gyanwapi mosque case which is under trial now upsc under the science section has asked questions related to different techniques and such a question was also seen in the prelims 2022 related to dna barcoding thus this region becomes important for us the practice question says consider the following statements regarding carbon dating the first statement is carbon dating method is based on the fact that c14 is radioactive and decays at a fixed and known rate now this statement is correct as the dating method currently used make use of the fact that the isotope of carbon that is c14 with atomic mass of 14 is radioactive and decays at a well known rate moving on to the next statement it says that it can be used to determine the age of millions of years old rock now this statement is not correct because the carbon dating cannot be applied under all the circumstances particularly it cannot be used to determine the age of the rocks or the non living things secondly carbon dating is not successful in calculating the age of things that are more than 40 or 50000 years old because after 8 to 10 cycles of half lives the amount of carbon 14 or c14 becomes almost negligible and thus it cannot be detected so the correct code for the question will be option a that is only statement 1 is correct moving to the next article it talks about the patta chitra art of kolkata now patta chitra is a scroll painting upsc in the previous years under the art and culture section has asked questions related to painting dance drama etc thus this area becomes important for us the practice question is consider the following pairs folk painting and their features patta chitra a block printed painting on cotton textile now this is wrong because we have seen that patta chitra is a scroll painting the second option is kalamkari which says picture painted on the piece of cloth now this statement is also wrong as kalamkari is a hand painted or block printed cotton textile which was produced in iran and in the indian state of andhra pradesh the third option given here is madhubani and is a wall mural of the mithila region now this option is correct as madhubani is a mural made by the women of mithila region of bihar during the ceremonial occasions like that of wedding etc the fourth option given here is kali ghat painting which says use of watercolors which is correct as kali ghat or kali ghat paintings is done at the kali ghat kali temple in calcutta which depicts everyday life and use watercolors for its purpose so 
The correct code for the answer will be option B that is only two pairs are correct that is Madhubani and Kalighat. Moving on to the next article it talks about the United Nations Security Council. Now United Nations Security Council has been in the news because G4 countries have repeatedly talked about the expansion of the permanent and the non-permanent members and also in the recent time United States of America has also talked about the expansion of the United Nations Security Council. Further, the UPSC in the previous years have been asking questions related to international organizations and thus the United Nations Security Council becomes an important topic for prelims. The practice question says that which of the following statement is or are correct about the United Nations Security Council. The first statement says that all five permanent members have exercised the right of veto at one time or another. Now this statement is correct as all the P5 member states have utilized their power of veto. The second statement says that a permanent member can exercise veto by absentation. Now this statement is not correct because if a permanent member does not fully agree with a proposed resolution but does not wish to cast a vote, it may choose to abstain, thus showing the resolution to be adopted if it obtains the required number of favorable votes. Now article 27 under the UN Charter talks about the favorable votes which include 9 favorable votes from the non-permanent members. Further, at any time, if a permanent member negatively votes against a resolution, such a resolution will be dropped. Moving on to the third statement, it says, as compared to other organs of the United Nations, only Security Council has the power to make decisions that member states are obligated to implement under the UN Charter. Now, this statement is correct. As the other organs of the United Nations make recommendation to the member state, but it is only the Security Council that has the power to make decisions that member states are then obligated to implement under the Charter. So the correct code for the question will be option C that is statement 1 and 3 are correct only. Moving to the next article, it talks about the issue of rabies in Kerala, which has been on the spread in the state. Now UPSC in the previous years has asked question under the environment section related to various wildlife acts and thus this area becomes important for us. The practice question says consider the following statement. First statement being the prevention of cruelty to animal act 1960 prevents pain or suffering on animals. Now this statement is wrong as it talks about the unnecessary pain. It prevents the unnecessary pain or suffering on animals. Because there can be a genuine case where certain animals like dogs, monkeys can be sent for castration to control their population. So the first statement is wrong. The second statement says under the Wildlife Protection Act 1972, states can send a list of wild animals to the center requesting to declare them vermin for selective slaughter. Now this statement is correct. As state government has to make a request with the center such that an animal can be declared as vermin. Moving on to the third statement, it says that the Wildlife Protection Act of 1972 empowers the central government to declare any wild animal to be vermin for any area for a given period of time. Now this statement is again wrong because the central government has the power to declare animal as vermin but it does not have the power to declare all the animals that is the animals which are placed under schedule 1 of the wildlife protection act cannot be declared by the central government as vermin such an order needs to be passed from the parliament the question further says which of the statement given above is or are incorrect now again focusing on the language of the statement so we have seen option 1 and option 3 are incorrect thus the correct code for the answer will be option C now moving on to the last question of the day it talks about the issue of Dalit Christians and Dalit Muslims to be treated as scheduled caste for which the matter has been subjudice now UPSC in the previous years has asked questions related to various commission whether it was election commission or delimitation commissions which was asked in 2012 so the topic of commission become important for us. The practice question says, consider the following statement about the national commission for scheduled caste. The first statement being, it is a constitutional body which safeguard the interest against the exploitation 
of scheduled caste and anglo indian communities plus also promote and protect their social educational economic and cultural interest now this statement is correct the second statement says consequent upon coming into force of the constitution 93rd amendment act of 2005 the erstwhile national commission for scheduled caste and scheduled tribe was replaced by two separate national commission for sc and st now this statement is wrong as it was the 89th constitutional amendment act of 2003 which provided for the separation of national commission of sc and st coming to the third statement it says that the chairperson vice chairperson and other members of national commission of scheduled caste are appointed by president by warrant under his head and seal now this statement is also correct as according to article 338 clause 3 the chairperson vice chairperson and other members of the commission shall be appointed by the president by warrant under his head and seal question further says which of the statement given above is or are correct so we have seen that statement 1 and 3 are correct and the correct code for the question will be option c that is 1 and 3 only so that was the questions for the day Stay tuned for the more such updates.